Hi, my name is Eleanor Smith. I am finishing my sophomore year at the University of Iowa and I am studying communications with minors in event planning and entrepreneurship. Two things that require a lot of leadership skills. Luckily, my parents have pushed me to be the role model and leader since I was a little girl. Leadership is something that comes very natural to me, yet it's not as simple as it sounds. Throughout this presentation, I will be discussing the different leadership positions I have attained so far and discuss how they each have formed me into the leader I am today. I will also be discussing what I see as my future, the leadership roles in which could come my way, and how I plan on bettering my leadership and followership skills. So I want to start from the beginning, kind of. I'm going to be starting from my freshman year of high school when I was elected class president. This is also the first major leadership position I was given. We learned early on in this semester from Johnson and Hackman that leadership is defined as a human symbol symbolic communication that modifies the attitudes and behaviors of others to meet shared group goals and needs. As a freshman in high school, no one considers themselves a leader because you are already labeled as someone who is at the bottom of the food chain. Luckily for me, I had an older brother who had my back and already branded himself as a leader in the classroom, on the field, on the wrestling mat, and in the community. I felt as though I had a lot to live up to, so I stepped outside of my comfort zone and joined student government. At first, I just wanted to be a part of something. I was more of a follower. As I gained more confidence in myself, I decided to run as class president, and I guess I wasn't the only one who thought I would be a good fit for the position. I ended up winning and began my duties to help make everyone's experience in high school something to remember. As a freshman, I didn't have very many responsibilities on the student government committee, but what I didn't realize at the time is that good leadership isn't only about how many responsibilities you have or how well you delegate them, it's about how you act and how you treat others as well. During this time, I was also on the high school soccer team. I loved playing soccer more than anything. It was something I could do to release anger, stress, or anything negative that was affecting me emotionally at the time. Joining the team was the most stressful thing I'd ever done. The older girls were mean, snotty, and thought they were better than everyone else. At the time, we had two team captains, Riley and Lindsay. I remember vividly how I never once wanted to be on Riley's bad side. She was a very mean and judgmental captain. She never helped you or tried to make you better. Her form of leadership was to scare the crap out of everyone and beat up on the younger players during scrimmage to make them stronger. While I agree that in order to be better you need competition, the way in which Riley went about things was aggressive and although people listened to her out of fear, they didn't respect her and a lot of girls ended up quitting the team. Lindsay, on the other hand, was a prime example of a leader. She was respectful and tough at the same time. She communicated with other players when they did something wrong. She never yelled at anyone. She would stay calm and explain what they did wrong and how to do it better next time. That was someone I wanted to be, and I was determined to get there. Lindsay wasn't only a leader on the field, and I think that's a crucial point to make. She went out of her way in the hallway at schools to say hi to the underclassmen, and she was always nice. She never once made it seem like she was better than us. She made us feel as though we were all equal. And even though we all knew we weren't, because Lindsay was a far better athlete in person than any of us were at the time, it felt good to be seen and heard and to feel like we were a part of the team. It pushed everyone to work harder and gave people motivation without even knowing what the real reason was behind it. My freshman and sophomore year were more about learning how to create a brand for myself. To figure out if I wanted to be the person looking up to others or if I wanted to be the person being looked up to. By my sophomore and junior year, I was elected class president again, and by this time I was given more opportunities where I could either be known as the type of leader Riley was or I could be the type of leader Lindsay was. As I got more assignments like planning school dances, assemblies, or pep rallies, I noticed that I was doing a lot of these things by myself and I wasn't comfortable giving other people the responsibilities I was given in fear that they would mess something up. I wanted things done a certain way and didn't know how to communicate that with other people. 
Eventually, I took a leap of faith and decided to meet with the other class representatives and communicate the tasks we were given and what everyone needed to do. If it wasn't for this discussion, I would have been drowning in responsibilities on top of having school, soccer, and other class activities I was involved in. It gave me the confidence in myself that I didn't have to do everything on my own all the time. I knew that if I didn't learn how to work in groups of people, I wouldn't ever be able to work in any type of business in my future. At the start of my senior year, I had joined a bundle of different clubs. I was now student body president. I was on the senior leadership team, Mother Moon Com Committee, Teen Trust, and so many others. Each group I was a part of gave me a different set of skills. Senior leadership allowed me to learn about the importance of patience. We planned and executed several class retreats for younger students in middle and elementary school, so I had to quickly learn how short their attention span was. I wasn't able to lose my temper, and I had to learn different ways to communicate with each grade. Mother Moon and Teen Trust were community organizations I was a part of throughout my senior year of high school. This is where I really learned how to work in a group. I was on a committee with people from different schools that I had never met and had completely different interests than me. It was hard because it felt as though we all were so different, yet my opinions were opposite of theirs. I quickly learned how to adapt and immediately took advantage of the leadership opportunities that came my way. I became head of planning, planning decisions and communication with donors. I was able to learn how to listen to others' opinions and ideas and combine them all in order to create a sec successful event. But it didn't always run as, so as smoothly as I would hope. Part of being a leader is knowing that you will never be able to please everyone. You have to find out what is important to the group and the organization as a whole and always make sure that meetings and events are following those morals and goals. It is often hard for followers to see this and know how difficult it can be. And I know along the way I might have been frustrating, but in order to get things done, you have to learn that you can't always use every idea and opinion. You should listen to every one of them, but you can't always apply them. You have to be able to tell those people why you made the executive decision you did and what they can expect or change in the future. As I entered the terrifying college years, not knowing who I was or what I wanted to be was very stressful. This was another time where I had felt overwhelmed and insecure about myself, so I quickly conformed to the followership characteristics. I never spoke up in class, I was never confident enough to voice my opinions, and I always just sat there and took orders from other people. But being in college, you find yourself in a lot of group discussions and projects, and there's always one person who has to step up and be the leader. Direct people on what needs to be done, making sure everyone is doing their part, and keeping the conversation on track. I quickly realized that I was, I was that person without even trying. I joined organizations on campus where I was genuinely happy and where I wanted to step up and take action. I wanted to have jobs designated to me, and I wanted to be someone who was in charge. We've learned throughout the semester that being a leader isn't something that comes so easily to everyone. Some people are passionate and born leaders, and others have skills and talents that prosper elsewhere in more of the follower category, and that's okay. What matters is that you form relationships with your followers as leaders. You have to learn about who is a part of your team and why they are there. You will learn the different work ethics and morals of the people you work with and eventually you will be able to form a successful business, organization, or group because you will know how to communicate and delegate to each individual. This class was useful to me because going into the fields like event planning and entrepreneurship, you interact with a lot of different people and you need to be able to adapt and go with the flow if something comes up out of nowhere. The main thing I will be taking away from this class is how different each person is and if you cannot figure out who your followers are and their strengths and weaknesses, you will not be a successful leader.